Hi, and welcome to Today's Parent, where we provide you with information and connect you with experts to ensure your parenting journey is an awesome one. My name is Christine Cassina, and I'm your host. On today's show, we'll be talking about kids' furniture. Have you ever thought about it? What's the thought process we need to put behind choosing kids' furniture? And in studio today, we have Teresa Gachier, who's the co-founder, co-director of Little Cribs, the home of exciting, exquisite, creative, kids furniture. Teresa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Christine, and thank you for having me. And thank you for having us here at Little Cribs. We Not love it here. Me. Colorful and creative, and I think even more workspaces need to be, you know, light up like this. Or should we say lit? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. tell us, what's the inspiration behind Little Cribs? Okay, um, uh, Little Cribs actually was started um, seven years ago. About seven, this at times get off, gets off my head, okay. but it's about seven, seven and a half years ago. Um, and the whole idea was to create spaces for children right. that are fun. Yeah, because most of the times when you're buying our furniture, and even at those days, many people thought of furniture, just like adult furniture, we'll be very keen on the dining table, yes. on the bedroom furniture, yes, but not as per a kid's needs, yeah, but as per... Actually, most of the times will be an adult's um, needs, yeah? Yeah. So precisely, uh, we call ourselves the Kids Ambassadors when it comes the to... The Kids Ambassadors. Furniture. Yes. Right. Tell us more. Okay. Why, why, would, why would you call yourselves uh, the Kids Ambassadors? Wow, because I think we, we make our furniture with kids in mind, yeah? Right. And uh, I'll say our pillars are uh, safety, number one. Safety. Uh-huh. We've okay. got safety. We've got multifunctionality. Okay. Of course, value for money, especially for the parents. Okay. And fun. Because kids' spaces have to be fun. It, they have to inspire some, some growth, some development, some excitement. Yeah. Okay. So they are not your normal kind of furniture like the dining and this other sitting room. Normal furniture. furniture. Yes. So let's take it one by one. Mm -hmm. Let's start with safety. So when I'm thinking about as a parent, thinking about kids' furniture and safety. Link for me the two by the time, say, of course, say I'm expectant, yes. then I'm starting with my baby crib, and then, of course, the baby will advance to leave the toddler bed. Uh -huh. How does it go when it comes to safety? Safety, by the way, is, um, and I think it's the number one, it's key. Yeah? Uh, for example, if you're buying a crib, I think it's critical that you look at um, all, yes, the baby is small, so they will not... Um, They'll not move around much, but at this at this point, it's a parent who's going to look at that, yeah? Yeah. Say for a crib, we have the sides, uh, which have spaces, generally, which is a functional bit. Okay. Actually, you can't have it all enclosed because it's going to be claustrophobic. So okay. there's the spaces that come on the sides, and those also have to be safe in a way that when the baby is asleep and there's a grow and they're bumping themselves on right. the sides, right. um, they don't get hurt, number one. Okay. And they don't also, their limbs don't get out you know, in between the spindles. So there's a certain uh, dimension that is recommended worldwide. Right. It should be about two and three quarters inches. Two and three quarters inches. Exactly. Anything above that is unsafe because their limbs or their head could get stuck. Oh, my goodness. Um, there's also the issue of the paint. Um, most so that still moving. falls under safety. Safety, yes. Right. Yes, because you'll find if a baby's chewing on um, a paint uh, that especially has a lot of lead, uh, mm. it interferes with the development especially the brain, okay. uh, yeah. So most of the manufacturers abroad actually have moved from the lead uh, kind of paint. Okay. And you're using lead free. Okay. And um, yeah, we also have things like height as a baby grows. It okay. needs to be adjusted as it grows so they don't also fall out. Uh, we also have things like um, locks which have been wow. burned, yeah. And I remember when you we were growing up, it was such a common feature to have, you know, the baby coat, you, you bring it down True. and then there's a way you put it back and, and it you has know, a lock on the side, on the, on the side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, okay, so that has changed. That has also changed, I think, as per from 2011, the crib safety standards, um, that should not, a crib should not have uh, locks. Why? Because what happens at the kids, uh, babies grow, yeah? You find that at times we get so carried away, mm. especially when you're working and a mother. So some of these milestones happen when you're when you're not in the house. That's you can true. imagine if your baby is uh, able to start opening the locks and you don't wow, know. Wow, and they fall off. And they fall off. That has caused quite a bit of um, actually accidents and, and deaths, and hence the reason why they were banned. That's good to know. Yes, yes. That's good to know. So there's a lot of that. You've just talked about, uh, talked about cribs. 
um, there's also as they grow other furniture pieces that you need to look at uh, yeah. safety wise. For example? Yes. Um, after the crib, we get to toddler stage. Right. Where they need a crib, a bed, sorry, that um, still contains them and they are not able to fall at, at night. Yeah? So okay. when they roll, in case they, they don't sleep like within a certain position. So Which they most of them to don't? Roll, you know, I know, the they're all over. Your baby. <laughs> that some will turn the other way I know, around. Yeah. and you wonder how. The head was on this side in the morning, it's on the, on the yeah. footboard. Yeah, and yeah. it's so weird. And at times we wonder how they didn't even roll off. Yeah, yeah? but ideally the best should have guardrails. Guardrails? Yes, so that they don't roll off. Of course, the height should be good yeah. to minimize the... You know, they yeah. fe something they fell they fell off, yeah, to minimize the impact. Okay. Yeah. So those are just a couple of examples when you're looking at safety. So, so Teresa, when you're talking about multifunctionality when it comes to your furniture, mm -hmm. tell me more. Shall we walk over? Yeah, of course. And have a look. All right. So what do we have here? So this is a crib. Okay. That already has been converted into a seat. Yeah. But um, I'll also guide you through. Uh, how else it gets converted earlier on because this is the final conversion of a seat. Right. Like I said earlier, our cribs also convert into a toddler bed. And we do that with the additional uh, guardrail. Okay. Which will just come and fix here. Normally our fundies will assist with that. Right. And it comes and sits like so. So it leaves a space for the baby to get on and off by themselves. Especially a toddler. Exactly. Right. And as you can see, the height is safe enough for them to, 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 do, to get to all go in and out. Unassisted. Okay. Okay. Um, then we also have, okay. um, I'll, I'll take you through when now it's still as a, a crib stage. Okay. And uh, we've got this one. Still the same as that, but the design is different. Also, oh, the, the difference is just the design. Actually, course, the difference the, is just, just the, the design, design, but the courts, all our courts do the conversion the same way. So both of them are baby courts. Exactly. All right. So this one, um, as you can see, it's at the top level. This is already not, uh, the mattress level has not been taken down. Okay. Our cribs have two mattress levels, this being the first one. And um, allow me to just explain about the safety aspect also of the mother. We do it in a way that they are able to lift the baby out safely and not especially if you have cs uh, you uh have your baby through hard yeah so it's right. not it's not hurtful okay so that's the first level of course after about six months when the baby is able to lift themselves you are supposed to take it down okay i normally the left other level comes down here and it's a pretty easy way of doing it Ah, what I wanted to ask, how come mm -hmm. one side is higher, lower, you know? I think this side is higher than the other one, right? No, is actually, it the same? Is no, it the same? no, no, no. They're actually the same. The same. Yes, they're ah, actually the same. It's, it's from where I'm standing. Uh, probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the other level, like I said, is below there. And it's a very uh, easy to do thing. Most parents say it's, uh, they're able to do it without being assisted. Right. Because it's just a matter of removing some connectors here. Ah, okay. And the mattress level just glides down and sits on its place. So it's something that they can do at home by themselves. So do you need to do that if you have an older child or a younger child or? When the child now is growing. Actually, from we advise from around six, seven months, depending on how fast your baby is developing, right. that you need to lower it to the next so level. So you lower it down. Yes, because you'll notice they'll start trying to oh, those like get moves. out. You know yes. the monkey business, yes. yeah? So one day you're finding they put their leg here, they want to get out, and it's that not safe because they'll fall down They're and get creative. hurt. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've seen the baby coats. Yes, also. What else? Uh, this is about the same thing. But now with this one, I think it's good to also uh, mention that we offer um, mosquito nets. Mosquito nets. Yeah, mosquito nets. And they are clamped on the crib. You know what I love about your mosquito net? I was uh -huh. just joking with a friend of mine. Yeah. We have, like most of us, being old school, we have this... Um, Thing of crucifying the net to the wall or putting the net, you have to, you know, screw yeah. something. And it, this is nice and pretty, and there is, it's, there's just some beauty to it. Oh, so wow. it looks really, really nice. Thank you. Good no, job on that. You know, some people are afraid of, I mean, of course, if you're especially in a rented, in a rented house, house, you really don't want to go like drilling walls <laughs> and doing so much. You just want to minimize that, yeah? So, precisely the reason for this. It is very nice. Yeah, thank you. And it, it encompasses nice. the crib very well. It's very nice. Yeah, thank so you. So even before we go on the break, I, I saw that, um, is it a, a changing table? Mm -hmm. Tell us more about it. Oh, 
Thank you for that. So, Christine, this is a changing table with a dresser as well. With a dresser? Yes. So, what happens, you can actually use this as a, for changing the diaper days and after that still use it as a dresser. And it's the, very pretty. The child can grow with them. It's very pretty. And we make them colorful, of course, because babies, you, you want to make their room <laughs> colorful. So, maybe once they are grown and you want to make it look neutral, all you can do is just change the knobs to maybe a neutral color, a black white wow and it will stand out and the child can grow with it yeah? okay so it's got ample space okay um, sorry i think we've not put it but there's supposed to be a rod there okay. or a shelf depending with what the parent what wants. they prefer yes there are those who will say put a rod because i want to hang small clothes and those ah. who want two shelves and you can put your diapers and your toiletries for the baby um of course these are the always drawers. coming they come in handy because of the small things like bibs. Yeah, socks. diapers, make some quick, you know, exactly. some quick diapers, you can put them there, wipes. Yeah. Then all the others, of course, clothes. Are the clothes. And then we have down there for blankies and those, what do you call them? I keep forgetting about them. What, the show? The swaddles. Oh. Yes, on the bottom drawer. I am. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. So uh, this is also multifunctional, you could say so, because it takes your baby from infancy, actually, yes. to whatever age. Yes. Even pretty. Yes. And yes. then once you're done with, you know, the diaper stage and mm -hmm. all that, then you can use it as a normal cupboard. Just a normal one. Very Even pretty. in your room, actually. Yes. If you change this, this is something you can use literally anywhere. Very pretty. Yes. Thank you for uh -huh. showing us your stuff. Asante. So we are going to take a short break and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Today's Parent. On today's show, we are talking about kids' furniture. And before we went on the break, we have a question here that has come in from Peterson in Langata. And the question from Peterson is... Okay. That's a very interesting question, yeah? But not to say that some of our furniture cannot be used by adults. Because right. you've got um, beds that are actually big enough and strong enough to hold their parents and their child, especially for kids who have a rough time getting to sleep. Okay. Yeah, so you get there are those kids who have to maybe cuddle with their mom or dad before they get to bed. Yeah? Right. But we like just talking about and specifying that we do kids' furniture. So your main focus is yes. kids' furniture, Yes. but you do furniture from zero to... 16 years. So zero to 16. 16 years, yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Peterson will appreciate that answer. Before we went on the break, you had talked about two key things that we need to look at when you're looking at kids' furniture. And the first one was safety. Second one was multi... multi? Functionality. Multi-functionality. Yes. So going into the third one, mm -hmm. I remember when you were talking earlier, you mentioned about kids' furniture, the need for kids' furniture to be fun. Yes. Tell us more. Okay. Um, Christian kids get stimulated a lot by fun spaces, yeah? And fun spaces don't only just come like that. It, it, it has to be a mix of everything. Right. From the walls to the pieces of furniture in the room. Right. To even their books and what they're like and their hobbies, yeah. Basically because they get stimulated by colors. Color. Yeah, actually from childhood. Right. And that's why you find that kids' uh, things are very bright. bright. Bright and colorful. Okay. And they torn down as they, they grow old and become teenagers, yeah. You remind me of our typical offices, just I gray know, and a just cubicle. Yes. And you know, they're stimulated. You come in every day and you're thinking, my goodness, yep. it's all gloomy. Yep. Yeah. So that's the whole idea of having fun. Yeah, fun uh, furniture. Okay. So when you talk about a crib or a bed, why not add maybe something like a star or a tiara for a girl who's wow. a princess, you know? Wow. Yeah, why not add maybe a, a chopper or an aeroplane for a boy who loves aeroplanes, yeah? That makes them own their furniture and enjoy it, yeah? That's a good point. And there are other ways of adding that, also wallet. Um, we've got wallet of things that they like, their hobbies. Okay. Things that talk of their character. So the whole idea is actually to make it fun and also different. Let them, let their spaces and their furniture talk about their character. I yeah, because kids are not the same. No. Just as us adults, we're we not, not the same. same. We're very different and they, we have different likes. Yeah? And that's why our spaces are different. Mm -hmm. And we find a way to bring out, when we become adults, we mm -hmm. find a way to bring out 
our spaces to you know to bring out our character yes. it's like a, an expression of who we are true 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 yeah. true true and with that i think i have small things here that um, exact we'll just give an example of that okay. so like here i have um it's like a storage uh, of a hanging um kind ah, of storage okay. and it has a name so you can see it has rose Alenia, and then you have these knobs, and you can put it maybe at the foyer of the room. Yeah, right. and they can come and hang their favorite bags, their scarves, and right. their, what they're using like every day, yeah, just next to their door. So you see, it's hanging storage, but it's not plain storage. It actually is customized to, to make the room exciting, and also the child owns it, yeah. And you know, it can make a child responsible in the sense that mm -hmm. you know that every time. You come with your bag or your jacket, then you can hang it somewhere. True, so true, true, some true. sense of, you know, I'm true, all grown up. True. And you'll be amazed. Such small things really get them excited. I've been in rooms where we just add a small thing like this, and the child is over the moon. Over the moon, right. actually. They'll talk about it like it's such a big thing. You'll be amazed. So these are just small examples. We've got names. Right. We've got um, also that like on their study table, you can actually maybe draw something. And it will excite them. They love their study time. Because you know kids, I think, I don't know about you, I've had times where I really fight with my kids or, of a study, you know, and yes. you're telling them, no, you've got to study. And they're thinking, no, should I be going to play football? And then in that space, that's yeah. just gray just and boy, you know, there's no stimulation. That's the thing. So kids' spaces, is, is, it's good to have them look and feel fun. You know, this is a different way of looking at kids' spaces. I was just wondering in my mind, mm -hmm. if there's any correlation between a fun, creative space and a child being mentally stimulated. I don't know, maybe there's mm -hmm. a way it enhances, definitely yeah. does enhance creativity. Yeah, it does. So it I does. don't know if there's any other scientific proof. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know about the scientific oh, right. <laughs> proof, yeah? But I'll give an example with my daughter who right. loves music um, and she plays the violin. Okay. So what we've done with her wall, we've done one focused wall with, uh, with some guitars and some, because she's a teenager. Nice. Yeah, so we've got a guitar and a violin and some sneakers because she's a teenager. And it really excites her. And I'll be very honest, she loves her room. So she will study in, yeah, her, she room? Will, in her room. She plays her violin in her room. There are times we even fight because she wants to have her dinner in her room. And I'm thinking, no, dinner we should be at yes. the dining table with the others. Yeah? So ever since we did that, she actually got so in love with her room. Right. And it's, it's actually amusing. I like it. Yeah? I, at times we'll fight, but I like that she loves her room. Because at the end of the day, you'll find that teenagers um, kind of very, they grow and as they know, get to know themselves. Yeah. yeah? They want their space. And they and isolate they themselves from, it. you know, the, from the family somehow. Yes, yes, but not in a bad way. Just yes. that because they're still trying to know themselves and discover themselves. And at the end of it all, of course, when they're 18, I'm sure at that point they, they have, um, they'll know themselves. So why not assist that process? Yeah, so I've seen it with my daughter. She loves her room and she actually now even plays her violin more. She loves her music. It has actually enhanced, it, an, it has enhanced um, her interest. So, Teresa, what are some of the common mistakes you see parents make when it comes to choosing kids' furniture? Okay, I'll start with a very common, obvious one, which is uh, shortchanging ourselves when it comes to, I think, price. Okay. Because uh, most of us will go for cheap, and um, I don't mean that cheap is ex expensive or always, yeah? Yeah. But the times don't look at these other factors. You will forego a safe crib, for example, for a, cheap... for a cheaper version. Right. That will actually uh, be safe and it will not even take your, maybe your child to over two years. Yeah? That is true. So when you consider, for example, that this one crib can actually take them to toddler seat and it's costing maybe 30K vis-a-vis -a, -vis right. a bed, a cot that is costing 20K and you take them to two years. Um, it's better to invest in the 30K so exactly. then it's absolutely for longer. For four years. Right. And so when I say that, what people don't even realize is that you have to still change the mattress. If your baby at two years needs another bed, that's another bed plus a mattress. But you see if you have a bed, a crib that converts to a toddler bed, that one now, even with the mattress, you don't have to. 
you don't have to buy another one. And then also they're very comfortable in it. Yeah. The kids are very comfortable already. So you're not really getting up out of the comfort from a two-year um, a, a bed, a toddler, a crib, sorry, right. to a toddler bed. You're not really disrupting their sleep and their comfort. Yes, because yeah. they're already used to this space. Exactly. Right. So when you look at it that way, you'd rather spend that 30K for a bed that will take you four years and... Yeah, you know, then now think of another one later. Okay. Yeah, that's just one example. There's also not doing much research. Research. Yes, kids, um, items and products evolve. And have evolved. Can you imagine, like, for example, if you were to go to Biashara Street now, that's streets, sorry, um, to, yeah. to mention, yeah? Yeah. What you got last year, maybe like a pump. Uh, maybe, for example, let's use a breastfeeding yeah, pump. Yeah. It's not the same that you'll get maybe next year. And, and the variety is even more. They keep, changing. they keep changing. And obviously because of innovation, right? And which is a good thing, meaning yeah. that uh, some things have become obsolete or maybe ideally they are not um, matching the needs of the child. Right. Maybe scientifically proven that they are not uh, good. So it's good to do your research. So research um, is another one. It's another one. Also walk around. I okay. tell parents to walk around, even when they come to our shop, yeah? If you're really jittery, actually, if I have a personal discussion with you and I find that you're still jittery, right. I'll actually just add you to walk around, do your homework, check out other vendors. So by the time you're really done with your walking around... You make an informed choice. Exactly. Right. Yeah, because also... Furniture is not bread. That's what I keep saying. It's not bread that you buy and say, oh, it's gone bad. It's rotten after two days. Let me right. throw it away. Yeah. yeah, It's something that you're investing in, some form of investment. Right. You're probably actually going to be using it and handing it down to other children. Yeah, Because most of the times in a household, yeah. you get one, two, three kids. You know. Yeah. So it's something that you need to think about and really walk around and yeah. just be sure that you've made the proper decision about it. Okay. Then also... I think it's good to involve the kids, especially at the point where they're able to express themselves. Yeah, Let's not be selfish as parents and just go and make the decisions on their behalf. Right. If they're able to... Give their input. Exactly. Just take the child to the shop where you're buying the furniture. Ask them what they like. You'll be surprised. Some of them even have an informed, uh, already formed... Um, idea of their um, colors, yeah. of the decor that they want. I know the best thing about that, they own it. They will not come later and tell you, no, I want to... I don't want it. Yes, for example, maybe she bought a princess, we bought a princess bed, and now they want to change for another Adora one. bed. Exactly. Right. Because you, um, you are with them from the point uh, of purchase. They'll own their furniture and also whatever else that you're buying. Yeah, so you will not uh, find them telling you, no, but you know, you're the one who decided, so let me now decide this, yeah? So it's always good to, to involve them. To involve them. And also, also just encourage them to speak and bring out their character in whatever that you're purchasing for I them. Hear you. I yes. hear you. Mm -hmm. Krisa, mm -hmm. we've learned a lot from you. You have a beautiful space here at Little Crims. Thank you, Christine. And we just want to thank you, number one, for your time and for the pointers that you've shared. You know, we get to look at kids' furniture in a different way because most of us growing up, furniture just checked in and you need to sleep on that bed. Yeah. And being that involved when it comes to matters purchasing, mm -hmm. The furniture, we were never involved. So on that note, we would like to say a big thank you to you for coming to the show. We've learned a lot from you when it comes to matters, kids' furniture. In a way, we get to look at it differently because most of the time when you look at kids' furniture, we never even think about involving our kids, you know, in that process so they can own it, they can enjoy it. And this is a way for us to start the conversation when it comes to spaces that our kids, you know, live in. True, true. How that can even stimulate creativity. So your pointers were very, very helpful. And we thank you for coming to the show and hosting us here at Little Cribs. Thank you, Christine. And thank you for hosting me. Thank you, Teresa. And with that, we come to the end of today's parent. On today's show, we were talking about kids' furniture, how to select kids' furniture, and the common mistakes we make as parents. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We've been on location here at Little Cribs, the home of functional, creative, and fun kids' furniture. For your parenting resources, go to www.supermamas.co.ke. See you next time.